Hello, how are you? Welcome to another Mayan Technologies video. Today we're going to be reviewing the process of creating and receiving purchase orders. The purchase module can be found within Material Management, Purchase Management, and this module, like the others, is divided into three sections, Setup, General Operations, and Reports. In the Setup, we can see the basic configuration that is necessary to be able to work with this module. For example, we have the Buyer screen, which is where we're going to register all the buyers working in the company. We can also define which are the parts that we're going to be working with, which are the part class, and so on. To start this process, the first screen we will be opening is located in General Operations, and it is the Purchase Order Entry screen. Here we have it already open. In order to start working here, the first thing we are going to do is create a new order. The first step to review is the PO date. Here, as we can see, by default it pulls the date that we are currently in, but this can be changed. The next step is that we must specify to which supplier we are making this purchase of material. We select, we open the search screen, and we can select any of the suppliers that we have in the system. The next step is to define the buyer who is working on this order. Here by default, Brian Howard appears. Now, why can I be working with this buyer if it is not the account I am set up with? If you remember, I mentioned that inside the setup we have another screen called Buyer. Let's open it and let's look for the buyer Brian which is the one that is showing up. Here, if you can see, the account that I'm entering, which is the Epicor account, is not registered as a buyer, but for the buyer that I have selected here, the Epicor account is assigned as an authorized user. This is why I can see, create, and make changes to all orders for this buyer, Brian. That's why I can be working under his name. We go back to the initial screen. Once we have this information added, we're going to proceed to save. Saving will generate an order number and now we can start working on adding the lines where we're going to specify which material we want to buy. There are different ways to do this. The first one is that I will select the arrow next to the new option and I can select new line. And the other is that I can go to the line tab and select new directly, which will enable the fields on the screen. In this screen, what I can start doing is define if I want to specify in the system that I am buying this material for a specific sales order. In this case, we're not going to do it. We're going to add material directly. And we can start adding the material I want to buy. We click on the part button, or in case I already know the part number I want to add, we can type it directly. In this case, we're going to search for it. We must choose a part number that is purchased, and as you can see, when we select it, it shows us the description and if we have any specified manufacturer. Then, we have to identify or tell the system what is the quantity we want to buy for that part number. We will specify that we want to buy 10. Also, here we're going to define what is the unit price for which we're buying this specific quantity. Let's put in that it costs $15 per unit, and we can see how our extended cost is updated. There is other information that we can be adding, such as the due date. Here we're going to specify when I need this material to arrive at my company. Here, as an example, we say that we want it to arrive on Friday. We can also identify if our part number requires an inspection at the time of return as part of our quality process and once we have our information, we're going to save it. Now we have already added that line. In this case, if necessary, we could be adding more lines. For this example, we're going to leave it with just one to make the process simple, so that we can learn how this process works. We must go back to the Summary tab. Up to this point, we have our order created. However, it is not approved and it is not confirmed. The next step would be to select these two fields so that our order is approved and confirmed. Let's select Approved. Why is it approved directly? If we remember, our order total is $150. Going back to the buyer screen, we will see that our buyer's limit is less than what we're creating in our order. 
If you notice here, we have a PO limit of $10,000. This means that when I create orders that exceed this amount, they will go to an approval process with the person that we have set in this one. Therefore, as we have not exceeded that limit, we can continue working. Now I have to confirm it and we can save. Up to this point, we have generated our order, it has been sent to our supplier, and our supplier must be working on it in order to receive it. Now what we will do is that we're going to simulate that the material has arrived at the company, but I need to tell this to the system. We're going to do this process in another screen that is inside General Operations, which is Receipt Entry. And we're going to look for it. Now, this screen is the one that would be used at the time of receiving. What do we have to do? Start creating a new record. The first field that I have to specify is which PO I am receiving. If you remember, we already have our number identified. What I'm going to do is that I will bring this same number, which we could be also be looking for. But if we know it, we can bring the information directly to us. Now the next step is that we have to create a packing slip. The packing slip depends on the creation you want to have as a company. In this case, we're going to enter random numbers, but we can put the packing slip that actually arrives with our PO in physical, and we hit the tab key. This will generate the information and we will go to the line tab. This is where we're going to start specifying, based on the PO we have, which line we're going to receive. Remember that I mentioned that by PO we can add more than one line, and also more than one release. In this case, I created line 1, and with release 1, it generates it automatically. It also generates the part number and the description. In this case, it is giving us the complete quantity, which would be the 10 that we entered. Now, if our part number had serial numbers assigned, that was a part number that had the track serial number checkbox activated, in this part, this button would be activated and we could be defining which are the serial numbers that we have received in that material receipt. Here in this case, what we're going to define is where we are receiving this material. It gives us the default information of the receiving area, which is the warehouse, as well as the specific bin. Now, with this material, what I am saying is that so far it has arrived at the company. There is a difference between arrived and received. Arrived is that it is at the company, but is not yet available for use. Received, on the other hand, is that it is available for use. What I'm going to do here is save. Now I'm going to specify that now I have received it by system. I mark it as received and I can save. For this case, what we could do to verify that the material is really already recorded in the system is to open the part number with time face. This screen is also very useful for us to be able to visualize which transactions are in the system. Now, here we can see that the transaction has already been received. Why? Because here it shows us that we had a receipt of 10. That's the amount that I have in the system. And with that, what we would do is represent what is the flow of a purchase order and the time that it is already in the company and it is received. And we can proceed to save. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. My name is Ana Muñoz and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for more content. Until the next one.